Today we're going to look at uh, test R or set reset flip flop. So I already have two lines um, of programming shown here, as you can see. Uh, so we're going to look at these and monitor them and see what they are. The first one uh, is simply a start stop circuit. Okay, and it's going to turn on and turn off a green light using a photo eye and a proximity sensor. So we have our photo eye. Once that becomes true, the green light turns on and it stays on until the proximity sensor uh, becomes true. Okay, and that stops it or it shuts the light off. And if you look down at the next line, you'll notice that it does the same function. Okay, so we have a photo eye that will set our reset, set reset flip flop. That first line will set it. That S means set, and that's tied to the photo eye. So that will set this output to true. And it will stay true or it will latch until it gets reset. And that's where the proximity sensor comes in. And that is tied into the input R uh, for our reset. So uh, we're going to pull up the trainer. We can see what this looks like. <clears throat> Again, the green light and the red light, they should work um, the same because the logic is essentially the same. The red light and the green light both come on at the same time because the green light comes on when the photo eye is true and then stays on until the proximity sensor becomes true. So the reverse contact there. And the red light's gonna come on as soon as the photo eye is true because that flip flop will be set until the proximity sensor is true and that will get reset. Okay. So that's an explanation of how it works. Now, why would you use this though? Okay. Because why would not just program it the same way we have as now? One. Uh, and one of the reasons why is if we want to incorporate some type of an analog signal or a continuous uh, signal. And so what we're going to do in our case today is we have a tank with a continuous level transmitter. So this transmitter will transmit the level anywhere from 0 to 100%. And we don't really care what's exactly how much water is in the tank or how much liquid's in the tank. We just want the pump to come on to refill it at 20% and then shut off at 80% so it doesn't overfill the tank. Okay, so this is gonna be some type of a surge tank or storage tank uh, that we're using. As long as it stays in between 20 or 80, um, that's what we want. We can also use this for uh, temperature applications if we wanted the heater to kick on, say 30 degrees, uh, and then kick off at 40 degrees, we could use this application too. Okay, this is how we can tie in uh, to an analog circuit. Okay, so to find our set reset flip flop, it's found in our bit uh, logic operation. It's got the labels SR on it. We're just going to start down here. We're going to do a new one. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to tie this instead of going to the red and green. We're going to get something completely different, so you can see what the difference is. And we're going to do yellow light. Okay, that's our output. Okay, now we will need to make a a tag for this, so we're just going to call it SR flip flop two. Since we already have one for the red light. Okay, now what do we want to have this set as? Okay, we want to use this as a turn on a pump to fill up a tank. So we want to be, turn the tank, turn the pump on anytime we're less than 20%. So anytime the tank is empty. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find a comparator less than or equal to bring that in for my set okay and we will just call this uh, simulated level or level simulate so we're going to tie it to an actual level transmitter today i'll be able to put a number in for that and when we're less than 20 percent of that tank level and okay, we'll set our flip-flop and turn it on so we need a new branch and we need to know when are we going to turn it off we're going to turn it off when that same level is above 80. So again, level simulate that gives me something that I can change. 80. And we want that to go to our reset. Okay, so less than 20, it's going to set. And then greater than 80, it will reset.
Now, without doing anything, my yellow light already turned on. It turned on. Why? Because the simulate value is going to start at zero. Okay, so I haven't put anything in yet, in there yet. And so what I want to do is I want to modify it and bring it up to 20. Okay, so we're less than or equal to 20, so it still stays on. Now here's where uh, a little bit of the difference starts to come in. I go up to 50%, the tank is still filling, the pump is still running. Notice this bit goes false then because 50 is not less than 20, but since we have it in a flip-flop, it's set and it stays on. Okay, so 50%, it's still on, still filling up, the tank is still filling up. And then if I want to get it all the way up to 80, now that's going to get my reset bit to become true. 80 is greater than or equal to 80. And so now my reset bit is true, turning this off. Okay, turning it off. Now, again, this is why we use a set reset flip-flop and not uh, just a start stop function because now what goes what happens whenever I go back to 50% both bits are false okay the pump does not restart okay, just because we got below 80 the pump does not restart even if I get all the way down to 21% the pump will not restart until I am at 20% then it will restart now if I go back up to 21% the pump keeps running Back up to 50, the pump keeps running. All the way up to 79, the pump keeps running. The only time it's going to shut off is if I get greater than or equal to 90, get greater than or equal to 80, and then it will shut off. Right? So that's why we would use a set reset flip flop versus just a start stop uh, command here, where all of our inputs are digital. If we have, we're working with some analog values, it makes it easier for us to be able to uh, handle that. I think there's other ways to do it, but uh, set, reset, flip-flop is an easy way to do it.